hero villains friends from all over welcome to the gaming q a live stream with your friends mark and jeremy from the angular team how are you doing this week jeremy i am pretty good i cleared my whole calendar this week in order to work on documentation mm -hmm. you know how much documentation i've written mark how much very little <laughs> no no, 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 no. That's too bad. I'm so sorry to hear that. Catching I'm up, so sorry to hear that. I was on vacation last week, and I just spent well, most of the time catching up on my inbox. No mm. bankruptcy for me. Yeah, so Michael Faith in the Building, he's super happy about the initiative. He's happy that you were working on documentation. So that's yeah. a good thing. So I but, have... I'll, this is a... Inside, insider exclusive for anybody who's watching now is I am working on a complete rewrite of the components guide for Angular.io and will then be moving on to hopefully do a complete rewrite of the templating guide, directives, and dependency injection. Mm -hmm. But it all is very dependent on how clear I can keep my calendar to actually work on those things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I get that. I get that. Um, that's super exciting. Ivan in the building. What's up, man? Ivan, welcome to the party. Michael, always good to see you. Michael showed up to so much stuff. I love seeing Michael in the building. So that's pretty great. All right, Jeremy, let's get to building because we spend time and then we're rushing at the end. What are we making this All week? Right. We're, we're going to make a Boggle clone that I'm going to call Doggle. So I'm going to go ahead and present my screen right now. I think I'm going to present my entire screen so you can see both the output and the oh sure all right make sure they're you're editor. all uh cleared up here yeah you know, uh, i don't get to look at you screen. while i'm doing this unfortunately mark boo <laughs> all right uh let me see uh that's not gonna mess us up too much okay jeremy so before you start we you need to tell the the audience what the boggle clone does like how do you play boggle like give them the high level okay so boggle is imagine you have a six-sided dice but instead of numbers on it it has letters and then you have a i think it's a either a four by four or a five by five grid that's in a little tray and so you put all of these letter cubes on the tray and you put a little cover over it and you shake it and then it, you let oh, it, yeah. start, mm -hmm. right? And then you start a timer and you have to find as many words as you can in the grid of letters that have been rolled, so to speak, inside of the tray. Okay. This is not the same game where you press the button, the clear dome in the middle, and then the letters pop up and then you have to find the words, right? It's not the same game. That's a different game, or either that, or they've rebranded Boggle <laughs> since I played it as a kid. No, that's the, but this is the game that I was thinking about the whole time. You had to press the dome, and then it. Okay. Anyway, uh, Marcus, good to see you. We see Marcus in the building. Mike B, loving the window support. That's what's up. I love mm -hmm. how Mike B is extremely tall, and I didn't realize how tall he was until I stood next to him at uh, NGCon. Yeah. But everybody's tall. You're tall, Jeremy. And I didn't know how tall you were until I'm I stood next tall. to you. I'm average height. Yeah, which is pretty tall. <laughs> it's pretty tall because not everybody's tall. That's just... <laughs> you're tall. Well, I, I'll pull like this. Uh, from my perception, I don't know. I don't know if I thought how tall you are. All right. So let's let's do a couple of things here. So I don't remember how big the the boggle tray is if it's like four by four or five by five so i'm just gonna make oh, yeah. it controllable <laughs> yeah there you go that sounds so good let's go ahead and i'm just gonna I'll do a couple of things here i'm gonna say we got a label for tray size oh now i know what you're talking about yeah this is not the game that i imagined jeremy i'm looking it up right now and the tray is four by four but you can make it whatever you want mm -hmm. okay yeah so we're gonna we're gonna start off like 
this being tray size four. The styles, look, it's not going to be pretty, everyone. <laughs> no, no pretty, no pretty. pretty styles. Yes, Michael Faith, that is right. Trouble is the game that I was thinking about. Oh, trouble. Not yeah. Basel. Trouble. trouble. Yeah. Okay. So you start coding that out. We're gonna. I'm gonna answer some questions. Uh, hey guys, are there any news about new documentation? I'm really excited about it. Yes, Shlomo, there is. We just talked about it. Jeremy is working on right now, uh, just brand new documentation around components, and then he has some plans for the future. I'm working on a course. Uh, that's all I can say. And I'm working on a course. That's actually coming along. Jeremy and I were in a meeting about my course this week. So we are. it's coming along. Let's see. Connected. Tray size. Four. I'm going to bind into that here. Man, that mechanical keyboard. It is. You can hear. You can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You work from home, so it's fine. Uh, what did I do wrong here? That's right. Mm, did you save? Save and always kind of. Oh, there you go. Yeah, didn't save. I don't know. <laughs> Normally, WebStorm saves whenever you move out of the file. Oh, WebStorm is showing its uh, the cracks in the armor. So. Here's actually kind of an annoying thing about NG4 is I don't have a way of saying just like four zero two tray size, right? Mm. Like I actually have to have an iterable, <laughs> uh, which is kind pull of pull request, cool, right? I wonder if there was anybody thinking about a better way of doing that. Uh, but I guess one one of the things we need to do is actually generate the all of the like individual like dice, right? Like the little boggle cubes. Yeah. And so I'm just gonna say four. Yeah, first get to get your tray set up. Yeah, yeah. Let's I'm just gonna cheat for a second. <laughs> just so I have something to print out and I'll fix that yes, later. I love that. Uh, and then C D, we're gonna do the same thing. Four equals let C of I was going to say you got to change that. Now we've got some these, and we're going to need some styles here, but let's just put an X there. See? Mm, so, we got to answer a question, though, before we continue. What's the question? Uh, it's about MDC components rollout, migrating the current material components. You know how we do it yeah. in uh, V15. Any thoughts when the legacy versions will be deprecated or removed? So they're going to be deprecated in V15, and most likely removed in v17 so it'll follow angular's normal deprecation policy of giving you a year of deprecation before uh, moving off to the next thing yeah so we'll give we'll give teams some time to make that transition as they need it Okay, I'm gonna make this a bit bigger, actually. Show. Uh, can everybody actually see my IDE? Oh yeah, how's the size? I think the size is okay, um, but that browser looks good now. You could probably go up just a little bit in the IDE if you want, but it wouldn't be horrible. Okay, it's um. It as 24 right now. I can make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, you can probably just go just a little bit bigger. Let's try for 32. Make it quite big. Oh, that was the wrong one. There's two font settings here. See, and in Visual Studio Code, it's just Command Key Plus Plus. Well, so I can zoom in. That only affects the current file, though. Ah, uh, got right. it. Uh, gonna be this looks great. File. I want to just change the whole font size. Um, someone asked, what are my thoughts on WebStorm versus VS Code? Well, that's going to be the rest of the stream now. <laughs> Don't start. Uh, I'll answer. I'll answer this. You keep coding. I'll answer this. 
Um, so VS Code versus WebStorm, both the tools are really great. Jeremy really uh, likes a lot of the features that VS, uh, sorry, WebStorm has that are outside of the kind of standard, like just like a lot of ergonomics for file creation, typing, move navigation, all kinds of extra spice. Both are good. We're gonna need a dictionary, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh um, yeah, that's right. Of all of the like. In real life, right? You would not send your like whole dictionary down to the client, right? You right. You know, have some server that is your like dictionary server or something like that. Or I don't know if you want to, you could send a few megabytes worth of dictionary down to the client. What? I'm not your boss. Um, right. <laughs> but for the time being, I'm just gonna like. <laughs> I don't know if somebody wants to like go find me a dictionary or something, but I'm just gonna like hard code a dictionary. Sure. Um, uh, what are some words, Mark? Cat, bat. Yep, cat. dog. Dog. We're just gonna do all three-letter words, so it's easy. <laughs> yeah, just to start. It's just to start. Yet, cat, uh, bit. Hmm. Um, Kit, bite. Oh, there you go. There you go. Boom. Get some bite. words. Oops, five more. Um. Uh, um, uh, bot. bot. Oh, it's like poop. Yeah. It's just like, it's not... <laughs> what the fun? What the fun? Um, we're, gonna have, we're gonna have such a hard time because none of these words are actually gonna come up when we try to test it. <laughs> that's okay. We'll get there. How to add type check into template input variable? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I don't know that um, template variables are included in the type checking? Maybe they are. I have never tried it. Uh, if they're not, you can file a feature request for that. Yeah. That sounds good. Uh, let me see. Is there a way to add build time directions that get removed after compilation? Like you want to remove like all the IETN. That's uh, an so interesting though, case. I, I can talk about this a little bit. The the internationalization stuff that those aren't directives. Um, those are APIs that Angular understands natively, and there is no runtime cost to applying those things, right? So, Angular does build time internationalization. So, you are effectively compiling your template such that it has a placeholder, and then there's a separate build step that inserts right. the locale information. And so there's no runtime cost for any of that. Right. Um, so we need to look something up, Mark, <laughs> which is the like, I don't know what the letters are on the-, the Oh, bottom. yeah. Good question. OK. So yeah, there's like an actual set of of these. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and steal this from this. Uh, oops. Oh, it's an image. Why did someone post this as an image? Let's see if any of these just link out to it. Oh, here we go. Cool. They have a classic and a new. Either one. I know he's got to get something working. I'm gonna, what's a good way to, for me to copy these? Copy them both and then just uh, select the column in, in your editor. Ah, oh, yeah, that's a good move. I'll do that. So let's close all that. Uh, we're going to create a scratch file. Creating scratch files is the most useful thing. So I'll paste that. And then I have this nice shortcut here where I can just grab all those, close that. There we go. So now uh, let's, you know, I don't know if I want to do tray size now, because then I'm going to have to invent other things. But I, I have, actually I have an idea for that. So let's say we've got our protected cubes equals, and that's going to be an array. And then we're going to paste in all of these things. Um, so it's going to be neat. Uh, do that. We're going to wrap those in quotes. Wait, hold on. For the dictionary, create a set. Yeah, a set is probably fine, but so, all right, this is a good point. Um, yes, he could do a set. He could do all kinds of stuff right now. We're just trying to like get it working oh, yeah. and then we can refactor. Like this is not a real application. Thank you for this feedback, but it's not like a real application. 
Um, but good, good point. But Jeremy, this leads me to something else. Uh, mm-hmm. Friends in the chat, I have an, I had an idea for a live stream uh, that we could supplement this one with, that we could build stuff. Now, Jeremy is super busy. This is really true. Jeremy's super busy, so that's why we don't have gaming live streams every week. But as a DevRel engineer, I have more flexibility, and I can do more of this stuff. And I was thinking about doing a live stream where we build maybe like a scalable application like from scratch and we do it over a few weeks how does that sound what people are would people like to watch that would you like to watch us like maybe i get some other engineers from the team to like join and we could like build something like i don't know i was thinking about doing a live stream like that and so we'd have like two live streams a month i do have a friend that will be a dream live stream for you, Alex, for you to join a live stream like that, where we could build something scalable. That'll be like a dream. All right. Hey, I remember you, Sahil. You've been here before. Thank you for coming back, and thanks for saying it's a great idea. I have great ideas. You see, I lost my hair because my brain got so big with good ideas. That's what happened to my hair. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, okay. Donald, this is great. We would scale from the eyes of the Angular team, but you cannot take our words as like the only way. There are other people who have great ideas as well. So if we did it, it would be saying this is what we think, but it's not the only way. All right. I'm going to write that down, though, that we could uh, start. We could try something like that. We can try it. And if it doesn't work, then... We'll stop. Okay, Jeremy, what have we so, got going now? Let me, let me talk to what I'm doing here. So what we want to do is for each of these, right, we want to grab the cube that goes with that index. And so uh, one of the things we're going to have to do, Mike, is we're going to have to go grab that shuffle function again from uh, from our last two streams so we can shuffle these, uh, these boggle die. We need a game kit, like, module that we can always just throw into our, like, games. Cause that stuff happens all the time. Yep. So I'm gonna uh, say cubes here. Uh, do cool. So that should give me. Yep. So right now this is just putting. Why is there a lowercase u? Wait. Where is that coming from? Let's expand these cubes again. Oh, I accidentally did that. I guess. Are you there? Cool. So these are our cubes. So what we're going to want to do um, is I'm going to add a couple of to-dos here to say to-do uh, shuffle the cubes. And we're mm-hmm. also going to want to then randomly select one of the sides. Sides, right? yeah. Right? So um, you might naively think to be like, oh, I'll just put like math.random here in my template. Do you know what that would make happen, Mark? Mm, tell us what would uh, happen. If, Doesn't sound if, good. If you were to put math.random in your template here, you would end up getting a changed after checked error. Checked, right, right. Because you're putting something non-deterministic inside of your template. Uh, and that means that Angular will evaluate your expression here and get a random number. And then it will, in development mode, do it again and get a second random number, and it will see that the result is different than the first time, and send like, hey, your expression changed after I checked it. Cool. Uh, As so you're building, I got to look up something for the crew. They're asking about some alternatives for like uh, uh, this thing. Yeah, there, there are alternative UI libraries that you can use um, more than Angular Material, like if, if you want to use other stuff. Uh, yeah. Here's some great ones. They got PrimeNG, NG Zoro, and there's from uh, NG Aki, Aguila, Aquila, Aquila. I'll put it in the chat. Um, but there is like, there's a lot of stuff out there that you can use if you don't want to use that. Or here's something else really cool. Okay, Ali, here's something very cool. The CDK, you can style that too, like, and just kind of put your own like design primitives on top of the CDK and, you know, have your own thing. I'm actually going to go open the <laughs> the project from last time. Uh, let's see. Open recently. Yeah, we definitely need need our game kit, our yeah, game I'm gonna utils. Go get, I'm going to go get the shuffle function. 
the shuffle function. Oh, I don't want to cut it. I just want to copy it. And so I don't need that. Come back over so here. So even in shuffle, we could also make functions for dealing. That's something that comes up a lot. It's going to be a card. It's just going to be uh, an array. Actually, it doesn't actually matter even what kind of thing it is. So this is actually a uh, shuffle of T is just a T yes. array. I was just about to ask you to do that. I was like, because it doesn't really matter what the thing is. Uh, what yeah. could you call it besides a deck to make it general? Um, <laughs> thing to shuffle. Mm -hmm. No, um, let's we'll call it like items. Items, perfect. Uh, cool. So the first thing we can do then, so we're gonna, I'm gonna actually move this out then. So um, I'm gonna say. I'm gonna come over here. I'm going to create a new file. That's what I'm going to do. So new TypeScript file. I'm going to call it standard cubes. And then I'm just going to grab all this and say um, export const cubes equal that. So that is all of the standard cubes that we have. And then over here, I'm going to just call this. Um, I'm going to start this off as an empty array. And I'm going to come over in my template and put here on this table, I'm going to say ngf equals uh, right? So basically, that's going to be our way of just not showing the board until we like hit the start button. Mm -hmm. So that did what we want. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to say uh, list.cubes equals um, Oh, see, we made our shuffle edit things in place. <laughs> so we want to. Oh, I think that's what Alice had called out. So you said maybe use read only arrays. Yeah. Yeah. So we were lazy when we wrote the shuffle method and we made it edited in place instead of uh, creating a clone. So mm -hmm. um, what is so the. Return. You clone something off of, like, is it. Do you just slice? like zero or something like that? Or you just say, oh, I think you could just say. Um, oh, no, just, just uh, square brackets, dot, dot, dot. And then, uh, yeah, and then the thing you want to clone will be the fastest. Sure, yeah. Actually, I want to call this standard cubes here. So, oops, there equals standard cubes. Uh, can you not just do like concat like that, though? That'll do it. Let's see, what doesn't it like? Oh, this is so standard cubes. I'm going to just type this as a string array. A string array, that's the best type. Yeah. It makes good music. So this is also going to be string array. Cool. So, and then we're going to say, um, shuffle. Does that concat actually do something? I don't trust that. You don't trust that? Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to try it. No, 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 no. Keep going. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to uh, try it. I want to know what happens. And then we're going to say, we're also going to have like protected. Let's just say uh, letters equals uh, is a string array. Um, just that. And for each cube, we're going to grab one oh. letter. Wait, what? Hold on. All right, let's say let i equals zero, i equals then. Come on. You do that, and then I say. Oh. Uh, actually, no, I don't need to do this. I can say um, letters equals cube. This is my cube's up. Math. Yeah. And we'll say C, and then C of, and we're going to say math.random. Or I did uh, not know about that concat trick. I just tried it and I checked the references to make sure that they weren't the same and they are not. Wow. I want floor or round. For I want, what? I think I want round. 
Uh, Math.random, and I want to multiply that by 6, I think, because I want a number from 0 to 5. Why doesn't it like your letters? Oh, I forgot that's that. Uh, I'm just going to make that a little easier to read for my giant font size. And then we're going to come back over here to our template. And this, instead of going to be cubes now, this is going to be letters. Change the other ones to 14. Yeah. All right. What do you think? When I hit this button, is it going to, is it going to work? Yes. <laughs> almost. Oh, almost. So what did we, we do wrong here? Those are probably indices that are out of range. So let me, uh, yeah, I'll, um, I do this again, I'm going to keep getting different things, but so. What um, about floor? Do you think floor is going to get us there? Because I think probably, it might be. It's probably that I wanted floor. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. All right. So because the hey, letters are all different size. I was going to say, change it to a monospace font if you could. Oh, I wasn't your... going to do that. I was going to set a hard coded <laughs> width and height on the, the TD. Mm. But we could also set it to a monospace font. So let's yeah. say. Um, Let's just say font model space because our font family. Model space. Let's see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, nest. <laughs> okay. Hey, wait. So did you know about this thing? There's a new feature called structured clone. Uh, no, I don't know about that. What is that? Oh, do? cool. I don't know, but I think it's a uh, alternative to like all the concat and some of the other ways to get us uh, a copy of something. Very cool. Yeah. So okay, we've started our game, and so now we're gonna want to be we're gonna want to keep track of words, right? So protected um, uh, words found. Just empty array. So when we start the game, we're also going to initialize this uh, words found equals to empty array. And we're also going to um, want to have a function to get the score, right? So function. Uh, so how do you find words in this game? Is this a player action or something else? Uh, so what you would do is you would click on the tiles and find words. Let's go. Right? So for example, looking at this right now, uh, let's try to find an actual word. Um, so here, like, hey is one. So we would get like H-A-Y, mm -hmm. right? So we would go click, click, click. And so we're going to need logic to track like what we are selecting so far. Sure. Um, so we're also going to need a button to probably, say submit. To say like, yeah, submit word. Or so confirm or something, right? Confirm choice, whatever you call it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and put a button in here after the table again. Do this. Um, button. Come here. Word. And we're gonna click here and we'll just call it commit word. Sounds great. That method. And we're gonna have to keep track of the letters we have selected so far. Um, and also the right, whoops. We, we need to make sure you can't select the same tile twice, right? So we're going to actually have to even keep track of the, like, the row and index. Right, because you can have two Ts, but them not be in the same row and index position. Yeah. Right. So we are going to add some styles to this TD right now. But you can do, I mean, you could do that pretty cheap, right? You could do uh R comma C, and then you could check against an array or a collection of like, or a yep. set of anything, right? And yep. just like do whatever you want and just make sure it's not being clicked already. Exactly. So I'm going to go ahead and add some styles to this TD. So it's yeah. So I'm also, if it's clicked, right? Cursor, pointer. Oh, I didn't select SAS. Why didn't I select SAS? 
<laughs> I don't think the CLI actually prompted me this time. I think it just other uh, background color. Um, oh, fancy. So we don't even need to say color. This is a pro move. Um, mm. What's a good color? Light blue? Maybe. Um, let me start. Yeah, okay. We can do that. And then we need a color for when we've actually selected <laughs> orange. That, that one. <laughs> so Just go, let's see. go orange. Uh, PD, it'll be Wait. A CSS class for this. So we'll call it. Um, <laughs> okay. Dennis, you got me for a second because I was like, man, how did he come up with that uh, color so fast? You got me. That was good. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Really? It's a real color. You want to use this one? What's the color? Uh, B A D A five five. Oh, if you're gonna use green, then do B A D A five five. Right. B A D A five five. What? Yeah. I mean, it's a green color anyway. Right. So if you're gonna I'm use gonna it, kind of real quick. Um, yeah, it was green, Dennis. No, you got me. That was good. You got me. You got me. You fun was secret. That, that was well, awesome. Select it on there. What does that look like? Okay. Yeah, it looks fine. Yeah. Yeah, Make pretty good. You. Looks pretty badass, is what you would say. All right. Uh, Taz Lehman in the building. What's going on? Good to see you. Welcome. All right. I'm, I'm annoyed that I have to keep hitting start game every time, so I'm just going to temporarily uh, put... On and it. People are impressed with how uh, you're able to concentrate during the stream and build as we're like chatting away and stuff. Yeah, so now we're going to tr keep track of the words that we had. So when we call, um, we're going to want to click handler on this TD. Mm -hmm. Click and we're going to say select letter. And we're not gonna going to path the row and the column index. Let's see if WebStorm is smart enough when I generate this function to add the type of the parameters. It is. That's pretty nice. Right? Pretty like nice. I said, generate method from that, and it inferred that they were both numbers from what is in my template. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. All right. So we're going to say um, we need to keep track also of the like protected. Are we going to call this letter selected? Yeah, letter selected. We'll just call that an empty array. And why do you call them all protected? Let the streets know so they can know why you say protected. Uh, they, like because we're doing a demo, it doesn't really matter. But when you say protected, it lets you bind it in the template. Mm -hmm. And it can't be accessed outside of this class. Mm -hmm. Since we're just building kind of like, you know, a fun, fun demo right now, it doesn't really matter, but I'm used to building UI components where I mostly want to create things that people are not allowed to use in the public API. <laughs> Got it. All right. So select a letter here. I actually want to move this up. Um, I want this, oops, I want this here. No reason other than that's just where I want it. And we are going to say this dot letters. Well, first we want to make sure that uh, this isn't selected already. So again, we have to keep track of the. Um, we're going to make a set. So we're going to say protected um, selected cells. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a new set. Of what though? Um, I have an idea. I have an idea too. It's going to be a string. Yes. Mm. I agree with you now. Right. I want to see what you're going to do. I don't know um, if you can do a tuple or not, because you can do tuples in TypeScript. So. so that, like, making it a primitive is going to be much, like, simpler than creating yeah. like, arrays and putting them in there. And so what we're going to do well, is... Well, no, I thought there was a tuple type. There is, there is, but um, a tuple... I'm not telling you to use that. Do not use that. But I was saying, yeah. I was interested to see what you were going to do. Yeah. Um, and then this not select. Or is it tuple? I said tuple, but is it tuple? I've heard it both ways. <laughs> okay, good. Good, good, um, good. So this dot. Uh, well, actually, I'll say if this dot selected cells dot 
has. And we're just going to say, um, yes, um, row, comma. That's going to be our the way we serialize a cell identity. Yep. Oops. And then I actually have to put in the rest of the if statement. Uh, we're going to just say return here and then like to do deal with the selection. But for now, we'll say you can't deselect, right? Once you once you click a letter, you have to commit to work with it. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Do it now. That's, that's like a one-liner because you already know if it has it. Just, just like, deselect. What happens, right, if I go like R, Y, N, and then I realize like, oh, actually, I don't want N. I click oh, that. Oh, it delete. It changes your order right. of your like. Yeah. Like, now, if this was an interview, Jeremy, would you want me to use a linked list to keep track of my uh, my my selection string? You could use a linked list. I don't think it's necessary, right? Like, the the dirty secret of programming is that when you're Set size is small, in which in this case, right, our n is at most 16. Right. Like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you can use right. an n to the fourth power algorithm and it's fine. Um, right. You could use an n factorial algorithm here and it's fine because there's 16. <laughs> yeah, because the set size is so small. It might as well be one, right? Like at yeah. this level. Yeah, this, is, this is also some insider stuff, but like I've done like, well, like, something in the neighborhood of like 150 Google interviews. And for some reason, I, I run into people who have like a weird aversion about using nested for loops. But even in cases where the size of one of those loops is fixed, right? So it's like, oh, this like this for loop is just like zero to three, right? Or like mm -hmm. negative one to one or something like that. People will be like, "Oh, nested for loops. Like, I shouldn't do that." When re in reality, it's like it's all about the the size of the set that you're working with. Mm hmm. And the reason I asked you that is because we get a lot of interview like questions, like you know, about interviewing. So I want people to have some answers. All right. Um. So this that's what we're gonna. Uh, what is it? Um. Add. Yeah. Add. Mm hmm. Just gonna grab this again. So we're going to add that to show that we've selected it. And we're going to add a little binding on the thing here. So our TD, we want to add a CSS class. So first, I'm going to restructure this a little. I like putting my ng4 as the like first thing, so I know. Sure. And we'll add other stuff. Um, we're going to say class.selected. And it's going to be selected cells that has um, R plus comma plus C. Oh, yeah, right. Because this template uh, language and not like full JavaScript. Yeah, we can't use uh, template strings in an Angular template. Yeah. The Angular expression syntax is a subset of JavaScript. Right. Uh, well, it's not a strict subset. OK, cool. That works. So the next thing we want to do is make it so that um, we only let you select adjacent cells. Is so, that how it works? I don't know how this works. Yeah, yeah. So in this case, right, you can. Um, you can't yeah, actually, go. You look for words here, and I'm not finding any. Um, right. If I want to see here, like um, there's rant, like R A H, which you there can't. Right. Like you can start here on R, but then you like uh -huh. you can't just be here and be like R E. Oh yeah, be connected like that. That's what right. you mean. Oh, okay, okay, right. okay, okay. It I has got to it. Be contiguous. Contiguous. Right. Oh, wait. But in the case of that rant, see, this is where it gets tricky. How are you going to handle the order in which they select? Oh, this is this is pretty straightforward. So what I'm going to do is, um, again, like... Is there I a think... right way to say that it's right? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Because if, for the case of rant, if I selected R-N-A-T, that's not a word unless you know to un... Like, do I have to select it in order is what I'm saying. Yes, you have to spell the word. <laughs> um, okay. 
I can't just like get the group of letters that mean something like rod is there, but I couldn't be like, oh yeah, RDO, I saw it all together. That doesn't work. So I am actually going to use a tuple for this one is part of C here. And I want you to do one more thing for me in this. I want you, I'm going to make it a little more, not complex. I want you to do one more thing. I'm Can you do it where every uh, cell you select is a percentage darker? So that way you can see the order in which they, they clicked it? You might run into a contrast ratio issue that way. What's a better way to do that? Let's let's figure that out later. That, that right. sounds like a nice feature enhancement if we have time at the end. OK, OK. I'll slow it down. All right, I'm actually going to initialize this to null. Um, yeah, 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 we're null. I know. <laughs> Um, uh, you keep going and let me answer some questions. Okay, so how much TypeScript do you see? Hey, Sarki in the building, what's going on? Good to see you again. Uh, do you see in the future of the web? I see a lot, TypeScript is great. Um, I don't know if we'll see first party support. I, I think Edge would do it first if anybody would uh, do first party support for TypeScript, like in browser. They kind of did that before with uh, Internet Explorer. There was like JScript. And that it was VB script support in the browser. But I think it as a, a transpiler will be the more, compiler and transpiler will be the most place you're going to see it though. So we want to basically say if it is adjacent, which we can do, I think this will work is return um, row. Mm -hmm. Minus last, mm -hmm. so last selected cell zero. Um, is equal to one and minus this. <laughs> I know where this logic comes from, which is really funny, but I won't say where. Um, object is possibly null. Yeah. So we'll say. Um, we're Just put a guard, there. right? Could you narrow it with a guard? Uh, no, no. I actually do have to check. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You have to, that's what I'm saying. Like, like with your if statement about the last selected being uh, not null or whatever. It's not last. So. Okay, so now we're going to use this and say, um, let's say class.selectable. Selectable, or let's see. And then we're going to go to our styles. And we're going to move some of this. So. Yeah. Well, you don't need the TD part of this selector. I'm just doing it to yeah, keep going. Keep track for myself. In terms uh, of time, you are uh, 43 minutes into the stream. Okay, so. so we're about halfway. Yeah. So then I want to also. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I should only be able to select. Um, and I also want to only put the hover. There, so I also have to then move to the uh, selectable hover. Is it? All right, and so now we just want to go back to the code and say when we click, we are going to say if not this dot is self-selectable we will just return and do nothing cool. and also when we do select something we want to say this uh, last selected cell equals all right let's see if this works e oh no hold on oh actually this should be an or these in prints. Okay. This should short circuit all of this. 
Right. So separate it just for a second so you can keep wait, 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 speed hold up. On for a second. So if if this is null, we should return true. But right. what if it's zero? You can't right. you can't just do do null. Because it could be zero. No, no, no. Um, the type of this is either null or array. Oh, I thought it was a number. Sorry. So this will do it. Um, so h e x. But yeah, no, I can't select this down here. Select a or g. So make sure. Oh, and see, now I've locked myself into the corner. I can't select anything. Commit word. Um, cool. So now we've done that. Um, I'm going to clear the game. So now we just need to make it so that we can commit words. And so this is where we're going to reference our dictionary. So um, I also actually want to add a little like display for the currently selected. So sure. This, that uh, sounds great. Uh, Letters selected is an array, right? Join. I think I should just be able to do. Let me see what you got going on. No, that's not showing up. Oh, did I not add to letter selected? I did not add to letter selected. Because <laughs> uh, I did selected cells, and then I also have to say um, just not the letters dot push uh, and it's going to be this dot letters of row times four plus column no string is not assignable to letter and never uh, because this is string array all right, so now it should show up. So, oh, it's joining them with a comma. I don't want a comma. I just want an empty string. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, P E S T test. There's. I feel like I'm doing the diagonals wrong. You might not be allowed to do diagonals like that, but that's okay. Our our doggle lets you do the diagonals. There you go. Commit word. Okay, so. Now we are going to say um, const word equals this dot letter selected dot join to Oh lower snap, letter. Steven Fluence in the building. What's up, Steven? Good to see Hi, you. Steven. He thinks this is amazing. <laughs> but Micro David wants to know, will you have an undo? So if you select a selected letter, which select letter can you can only deselect the last selected letter you can't i have a, a to-do for that to deal with these yeah but it has to be the last selected letter it cannot be one in the middle yeah we'll so in order to do this we're going to have to keep track of a stack of what we selected instead of just the last selected and then we can add like a special indicator on it like a border or something something uh, and so now if uh dictionary which we need to import Come on. Oh, I didn't export the dictionary, did I? Nope. Dang. Uh, if dictionary that includes word. Um, and what did I call it? Words found. This uh, words found dot push word. And then we need to, um, did I forget to, yeah. Again, string array. So Tell now, the people what's happening, why you keep having to change the type from those. Um, so TypeScript at its strictest, right? If I just say like type words found equals empty array, it has no idea what type is supposed to go in that empty array. So to be the strictest it possibly can be, it will type that as never. And so I come back and I explicitly tell it that no, I actually want this to be a string array. So that way later I can push strings to it and it knows that that's correct. Uh, I also want to show the words found that I have. So I'm going to go back to my template and um, I would like oh, to- Oh, people are having a good time if you put this in the, in the uh, template on line 23. 
Oh, did I? Shh, that doesn't work. Shh, pretend you never saw that. Pretend that doesn't work. <laughs> People are already commenting. It's already taken some mind share. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Should throw an error. <laughs> we shouldn't have made it work. <laughs> um, I'm gonna guess. Well, I don't... see, I didn't think through on my layout here, so whatever. Oh, that... oh yeah. Don't worry about the layout. Uh, and then we're going to have li and g4 equals what's uh, let w of words found. I'm just going to put that w there. So now we are checking if dictionary includes this. Um, and then we will start. Um, Select the cells equals null again, right? Because we're going to clear that. Um, Change select the cells to be a union type. Um, which, hold on. What This is set. Hold on. I have to clear it equals um, new set. Oh, okay. That's what I wanted. Um, a set of what type? It doesn't matter. It's already a part of the, the type. Uh, letter selected equals empty array. Let's stop. So equals that I want null. See, I should refactor all this out into a what might here. It's actually just the start game stuff, right? So Boyan, he's using WebStorm. He loves it. He's an ambassador for WebStorm at this point. Um should be able to refactor. Not an actual ambassador. Function, right? So he likes so it a lot. Introduce extract method. Uh we're going to call it um, reset. Cool. So I refactored that out into its own function. And it was not smart enough to do it up here, too. But I'll say this uh, reset selection here. All right. Let's see if we can find. All right. So just temporarily, I'm going to comment the check against the dictionary <laughs> so we can actually. Um, we're here. See if, see if we can win one. So we can actually like just, uh, where'd my word go? Oh, I didn't actually push it. Well, I pushed this into words found. Oh, but then I clear words found. I don't want that. <laughs> I feel like there was something else I needed to clear. So selected cells, last selected cells, and letter selected. That's what I'm missing here. You got um, letter selected. It's not last. Selected cell. Goals. I'm glad you had the foresight to make this a, a function early instead of copying and pasting. That'd be annoying. Okay. So yeah, that, that part's working. Uh, and so now we'll add our dictionary check back in. Oops, not that part. Um, where's this here? All right, so let me just do a Google search real quick for JS English <laughs> Dictionary. Let's just, or actually not even like list of words. Here's a spell. Um, how do I actually get the list of words? There's a link somewhere on this page that will give me what I want. English. Oh boy, these are all archived. <laughs> this is a bad idea. Um... I don't know. Let's just try what happens. Hold on. Downloads. No, I don't even have. All right, we're not doing this. <laughs> Can you do this dictionary API? Can you call the API and say if the word is there? Uh, which dictionary API? API dot dictionary API dot dev. I don't know. Do I need make API key for that? I don't know. Here's what I'm going to do. 
I'm just going to invent some more words for a dictionary. <laughs> no. well, there has to be a English word list. Dictionary English word. Yeah, this is not a, a useful use of time. No, you're good because this is this is core. You out of here? Come on, stop it. Oh my god. Oh wait. Okay. 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 I got some list of English words for you. Uh, right. words of text. Where, where's this list of English words? D W Y L forward slash English dash words. So just send me a link on Slack. Everybody will see my All Slack right. for a second. All right. All right. Oh, All right. this is horrible. All right. Uh. All right. Actually, I have another computer here. Okay, I'm going to send you right now. Hold on. There's your English word list. You got the link? Yeah. All right. Oh, GitHub doesn't like this. Okay, here we go. Oh. So if you get past the letters and the dots, you should be able to, like, copy the words, right? Like, with the... Uh, See if my computer doesn't hate me after this. <laughs> Sheesh. All right. Z Z T is a word. Get out of here. Zwitter. Some of these words is made up, bro. Come on. Yeah, this this isn't a super accurate dictionary, but that's okay. So um, I need to put quotes in all of these. So what I'm going to do is actually just I'm going to find start of stream. your computer's getting mad, by the way. Yeah, I've because you know, your stream is lagging just a little bit. That that's not surprising. Oh man, WebStorm doesn't like this. Oh, WebStorm will let me take create more than a thousand carrots, so I have to do this uh, with just find and replace. Oh, do it with the uh, regex. Just dollar yeah, sign. I'm, really, I'm going yeah. to. All right. Oh, my all right. Is all right. a little um is a little laggy. I should have done this in a scratch file. Well, actually. <laughs> Let me see something. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, it's trying wow, to do like... Wow, your computer's <laughs> coming back to life. Yeah, here. Well... This is what software engineering really is. <laughs> it's putting things in a text file so that you can make them strings. Um, okay. Um, now I want to... I recently, like, so we want to replace start of string, and then literally anything, mm -hmm. and then end of string, with quote, and then dollar zero oh. quote, comma. All right, question for you: Is it going to care about the last care? The last one having a necessary quote? I mean, comma, sorry. No, tra uh, trailing commas are preferred. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah. The more you know. I, I always prefer trailing commas. Right? Because then uh, when you add another line after that, you're not modifying two lines in the diff. Mm. All right, we've got our dictionary. Um, this is kind of weird because a lot of these include, like, punctuation. Oh, some of them had commas in them. Whatever. Yeah, okay. Some of them had single quotes, so that messed it up. Wait, uh, you got a message saying that someone sent you one in JSON already. Yeah, it's fine. We're, we're already pretty far along in this rabbit hole. <laughs> We've committed to this. Yeah. So we need to, like, why is this in here, right? What, uh, so word list is this? So we're going to find anything with a quote in it. There's over 4,000 of them here, so we're going to just replace those with uh... another quote. I'm just kidding. Don't yeah. do that. <laughs> we're, Don't no, do we're going to actually, that's actually the easiest thing, is I'm just going to replace them with another character. So yeah. we're going to replace quote with uh, double quote. Replace all. Yeah, my ID is lagging hard. Um... And then I'm going to go ahead and do that same replacement I did a minute ago. With that, that quote. Um, zero. So 
So dollar zero is a WebStorm specific thing here that uh, targets the entire match. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, it should work now. Got our dictionary. <laughs> oh, that was so dumb. <laughs> what happened? Wait, you, you did something. All right. Well, let's see how long this takes to load. <laughs> yeah, probably not ideal. Um, I'm curious. I'm going to go to the network panel here and see how big that file is. Or how big my JavaScript is now. Um, uh, oh, yes. So I have. Well, where is this? Is it lazy loading in some weird way? It's definitely bigger than uh, 236 bytes. Uh, I, I don't know. know. You say all. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Not important right now. Let's go back to let's go make back to making doggle. So now that we have our dictionary, um, let's find some words. Um, oh, there's G O D. I don't know if that's weird, but there's that word. Uh, wait, that didn't uh, apply it. Why not? Is that let's see if that word's in our dictionary. Oh, you know what? Is this only uh, A's? I need, I need to also make sure that um, dictionary is lowercase. Uh, oh boy, oh. this was such a bad idea. <laughs> no, don't do it. Don't do it. Can you like capitalize? Like when you do your comparison, can you just all lowercase in the comparison? But you're doing the find, right? I'm doing includes. Includes. Oh, my ID is fully locked up. This is a bad idea, Mark. We should have just used that API. <laughs> this is how we learn. Well, while your IDE is locked up, hello, why are the Angular docs too hard to understand? We're working on that. We are really actively working on that. Um, uh, we actually talked about this in the beginning of the stream, that Jeremy is working very diligently to make this work. So to make it better, we're working yeah. on it. Hang in there. I, my IDE is like fully locked up now. But hey, the this thing still works over here. Hey, wait, what is this? Control shift U for a toggle case? Hey dog. Yeah, that I considered doing that right after my IDE froze up. Oh. <laughs> um, yod? It's not a word. Uh, but they're not going to match because it's not census case. I mean, uh, yeah, census case. Dodge. Right? Oh, that's a good one, Jeremy. Um, apparently not in our dictionary. <laughs> Well, but it won't match, right? Because they're not census case. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just kill WebStorm and try to restart it. All right, uh, let's see. Is there anything else we can do real quick? Um, oh, 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 oh! I know what you can do. I know what you can do. If you want, if you want to make a local API real quick, you can serve this as a JSON file with uh, JSON dash serve like uh, npm thing, and then you can make a quick fetch call to see if it's in there. If you want. Um, I'm just gonna. Bro, I'm not gonna uh, open it. I'm just gonna delete dictionary.ts. All right, and I'm just gonna get rid of the check for it. So we'll just. All right. You want me to find another gonna, word list? We're just gonna. It's gonna be the honor system right now. <laughs> All right. But yeah, so we've got our our basic game here. So we've got a little time. What do we want to do to like change this up? Deselect. Deselect. Okay. So then we are going to have to change our last selected cell here from a, tra tracking a single one to tracking a um, like a stack of what we picked. So so you can continue to go backwards. Yeah. Or so, no 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 no. You don't need a stack, Jeremy, because if you 
Yes, you. Do. I lied. Never mind. I lied. I lied. I lied. You need it. Um, so we're. I gonna was gonna say, it. wasn't there a way to just no way. once you if you have the last selected cell, there wasn't a way to look at your like selected cells, but you you're not using an array for selected cells. You're using a set. That's where the, the drama is unfolding. So we're gonna say um, that last selected cell now is actually um, we don't have to have this null anymore. We're gonna initialize that to empty array. Um, and we're also gonna refactor it to uh, selected cell stack. So here where we would normally set this on it, now we're gonna say instead we're gonna um, is there an equivalent for push that goes in the front? On shift? Yes, that's what it is. Um, on shift. That's one. And then um, we are going to say here, last, last button equals this dot. I'll stack. Uh, duh. we want the very first one, so always zero. So, um, and, and then this becomes that, and then this back to that. So. That should be enough to confirm that this still works. So pop, pop, pop. Yeah, that still works. <laughs> um, and so now we want to undo. So let's say our last, let's, we're going to add another CSS class for that's not um, last. But it won't be selectable. So why do you have to do that? Um, you hold on. You'll see what I'm doing in a second. So okay, I get you. Yeah, you can you fit it a doubt. Um, zero zero. This is sloppy, but. Um, I should make this a function or something. So basically, we're going to say, is the like, we want to give a special highlight to the last selected one. Oh, I see what you're trying to do there. Okay, and I'll allow it. We will do that by adding. What happened to your tray? <laughs> no, seriously. Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That ain't so great. I broke it. What I do? Uh, cannot read properties of undefined. So yeah, it's because there was nothing selected. Um. Oh, here I'm gonna just extract this out into a function. Yep. Because you need an or in there someplace. Yeah. So we're going to say where I have it here is cell selectable. So I'm also going to have protected is last selected cell. So return this dot select dot blank. So we have, we have something that's selected. And uh, we're going to need row number, call number. And should be able to say row here and put in the this dot. gonna do something I probably shouldn't do just for development purposes and change this from border to outline. Why? 
um, because outline is non-layout affecting. Oh, so it doesn't look any different? Which yes. you can't really see it against this uh, color, though. Yeah, you that's... You do something like red or something. What, what flavor is a pink? How about a deep pink? How's that? That looks great. Now deselect it, though. Yeah. So now... <laughs> Uh, that's the easy part. We'll say um, we have select letter here. Mm -hmm. So if it's not selectable, we return. And we have an selectable that it is within that. Um, and then we say if it already is selected. Cool. So here um, we'll say, like, if it's already selected, we'll say if it is the most recently selected one. So um, if this dot is a selected cell of the phone. We will deselect it by, uh, we want to take each of these. Um, OK, that was nice. I'll give you credit for that. Uh, so this dot letter selected, we're pushing that one at the end. So we're going to want to, I think, uh, pop picks the first one. So we want to shift, right? No, pop starts from the end with an array. Does it start at the end? Shift. Okay. Yeah, pops at the end. Let's see, array. And pop. then selected cell stack, we will also then. This yeah, one we shift. Right. right. Uh, and this one okay. Oh wait, Sounds this right. one is this one's the set. So we actually just want to remove it from the set. So dot selected cells. Dot, what is it? Delete? Yeah, delete. And duplicating ourselves a lot, but that's okay. So it should be a variable. Pop does right. modify the array. Are we okay with that? Yeah, we want so to shift. All right, that didn't work. <laughs> Why didn't that work? So this should be unselecting it now. So let's just see, is it getting in here at all? Um, so yeah, let's just go debug. Um, you can just write debugger in your code to save yourself some time. Because it run a little low. A little low. Where? Hold on, I'm just going to. I'm not going to bother digging around in DevTools right now. So I'm just going to put. The butter right here. Boop, 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 boop. Cool. So we will step through. Okay. So letter selected right now is T A H. We step. It removed that H just like we wanted. Mm -hmm. Then selected so cell stack. Yeah, we step through that. And we have. That's right. Uh, that's two right. twos, right? Um, zero two right. First row one. Yeah. Two, okay. Yeah, eight. that's right. That should be T. And then it's probably that was right. Shows that okay. So, is there another piece of state we forgot to? Words found letters. Can you select a cell? No, oh, that's all of our state. Did I just forget to save the file? That happens, but no, because the code wouldn't be there. Um, get rid of that debugger. I'm gonna add a breakpoint here, um, and then disable it. Just gonna get back to there quickly. Hmm. So why is it not working, Mark? Oh, you know why? Because I add it right back afterwards. I need so to return here. Else. Return. Okay, return or else would have done it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, W and add it right back. Get that. Yep. And get M. And we can't. Yep, we can't select. Go all the way back to the beginning. Oh, to the oh, empty something's wrong, right? Something's not right because I can go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And now, this one shouldn't come up as selectable right now. Hmm. So. Let's go to is cell selectable. 
So that's selected. Uh, so it's just saying either nothing is selected or it's within one of the most recent selected. We also have to say, and it's not selected. Right. And, um, or if it is selected, it's the most recently selected one. <laughs> so, and um, this dot cells dot a row, comma, um, or you want to say it is the last selected row equals last in. Zero. All right, 15 minutes. Do, 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 do. None of these show up as selectable. This one does. I can undo that. Okay. Oh, but now this select one. anymore. Now I can't do this one anymore. 4K no. Turn my breakpoint back on. Click that. Let's see what happens. Oh, huh. Ooh. Uh, okay, Pete LaMonica just got here, but he wants us to do more engineering. He wants the position interface instead of all our like hacky like tuples and arrays and stuff. Yeah. No. It's hard this to do speed. in a live stream. <laughs> this is for speed. Well, okay, yeah. so here's the difference though. I'll tell y'all. When I do my uh, live stream or my live coding, I actually plan a little bit before. Jeremy likes to like go and code on intentionally for the challenge. Yeah, so I plan a little bit more. Jeremy's like, no, I'm going yeah, to code. I like to improv. Last selected equals one, two. That's correct. And so again, here, what's my row and column index is also one, two, and last selected should be one, two. Yeah, I don't know. I got my logic wrong here somewhere. So we're saying a cell is selectable if nothing mm -hmm. has been selected or yep. It's within one of the most recently selected thing. Oh, wait. Uh -huh. I guess. But that. Oh, you know what? It, we actually. I, yeah, go ahead. I, I think that's your problem, right? We'll say that. Hold on. And yeah, this shouldn't be an and. This should be an or. And then we wrap. Wrap. In friends there. I think that's it. Turn that breakpoint back off, refresh that, and do 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 do. There you go. Bravo. You got boggle working. Let's see. Hmm, this is actually hard. I feel like it was easier to get words here. Bet, yet. Hmm. Oh, it's letting me select words twice now. <laughs> I broke it again. Um. So it's a little buggy. We got 10 minutes left. Do we want to try to fix that? Or does anybody else have things you want to chat about? <laughs> well, so Steve, well, when we say pre, when I say pre-planned, I mean, I think about the problem. 
Not that I write the code beforehand. I just think about it to see what we could do because we have a time limit. But in Prive Live coding, you know, I think there's value in both. But I, but my goal is to like really get the whole thing done. And so I don't know. Maybe I will go and code. Maybe I won't. But either way, I'm glad that you do get a lot of value out of uh, watching the improv. I might just break this up a little so it's just easier to read. All right, so, but like in real life, I would actually sit down and like debug this expression and get it working. But uh, just for demo purposes, uh, to make this easier to read, right? There's like, we'll say nothing is selected. And we'll say um, if. The cell is not selected, right? So we'll say. Mm -hmm. There you go. It's not Break selected. It down. If it's not selected, then we will say return. It's within um, one of the most recent selected. What concept are you looking for, Sahil? breaking it mark i noticed i'm just trying to give you a little bit of silence so you can like debug and not like yeah. set you up so if nothing is selected return true cool yes. if the cell is selected or no if it is not selected then it has to be within one of this right so so the selected part right like that that is working right that's fine oh pete pete said he saw it for you he said, last selected, copy, paste, fail, it's a uh, wrong index. Oh, yep. Wow, Pete from the stream. Wow. You get so focused on the macro, you don't see the... Yeah. All right, so let's try this again now. Yep, none of these are selectable. This one is. This is fine. Good work, Pete. <laughs> Um, G -E -T -E. Now, now I just want to play Doggle. Yeah, play it then. You got a few words okay. in there. What do we got? Oh, what happens when you submit a word? Cheer. Submit word. How can, oh, okay, fine. Fine, fine, fine. You can do it that way. Win. I gotta close my dev tools. Yeah. You got here. Can you, can you spell mm -hmm. it backwards though? Here? Twin. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. That works. Uh, I thought you almost had recite, but you can't go that way. Yeah. Almost rescind, too. Mm hmm. Um, okay. I can, also, I can also, real quick, just put in a. Uh, I'm noticing now that I'm playing it, I want a. Um, for clear word, um, but fortunately, we already have a function do, so we can just say just that selection. Um, we made it private. <laughs> you made it private. Protect it. Okay, that's why protect. Nice job. Cool. Now, obviously, there's a bunch of layout shift here and all that stuff, but. There's T, T's, uh, Van, Van. Oh, I could almost pull Santa. Mm. 
Bean. Beam. Oh, you get Bean. Yeah, there you go. Bean. <laughs> yeah, not having a dictionary was the best uh, decision. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it would be nice to have the dictionary uh, validation. I did find a second uh, word list from that same place, but it's and it's already in JSON format. But and it's no weird characters. But the problem is, it's still huge. It's like six megabytes. Yeah, we don't need a dictionary. We have the honor system. Sure. Sure, but this is pretty fire. Pretty good, pretty good. Bane. Bane. Toy. All right, we did it. This is the first time we actually kind of like finished a game. This whole tray mm -hmm. size thing, I ended up not doing. <laughs> what I was it shouldn't matter, doing, right? No, what I was going to do, so what we'd have to do is um, once you run out of these uh, 16 cubes, I was mm -hmm. just going to start like looping back around. Right. So I was just going to like shuffle these, right? And then like effectively start placing them. And then once you ran out of the 16, just wrap it back around again. But oh, honestly, man. I'm not going to bother. This, this is going to stay four by four okay. okay friends what should we build next time i think we said we're going to have a guest next time jerry for the last stream of the year uh what's that first week of december mm -hmm. oh i i'm gonna look at my calendar for that because uh we got we have a big internal google event that we week oh yeah we we might have to delay we might have delay. to delay uh yeah it, it'll probably be okay well you get to come hang out and then i get to get uh i'll get to build something depending on what the streets want to see us build so friends at home what would you like to see us build next Let's see. That was awesome. That was awesome. You get some a lot of positive feedback. That was awesome. Steve loved it. Uh, well, let's see what else we got. Paul says, love to see masters at work. I mean, that sounds good. Let's see. Uh, Go could be a nice game to create. Like the, with the, mar not marbles, but with the stones. Go is a, I have a friend who uh, loves Go and uh, reads books about go like really intense uh but it'll real real big passion breakout is break you talking about the game where you got to hit the little thing and it shoots around and breaks stuff we can't do that we're looking for like oh i forgot to do the scoring <laughs> you did forget about it i used to love 2048 arthur like seriously that was my favorite game for such a long time minesweeper i mean this is this is minesweeper right I mean, we're almost there, but with Nuno's, not a bad idea. Uh, let's see, simplified Shogi. I don't know what Shogi is, but I could probably look it up. Um, but these are all great. <laughs> all right, Jeremy, we're going to have to tag team on this one. But right. as Sekiria Se says, we should build GTA 6. That was funny. That was funny. I like that. Uh, if it's text based, <laughs> yeah, we could. We could build a story-based game. I mean, so we could build something besides a board game, right? We could do card games. We could do story-based games. There's some other kind of stuff. Sellers of Catan could be interesting, even though I don't know how to facilitate the, like, bargaining. Pac-Man. We could probably get away with Pac-Man with the uh, with change detection, but I don't know. Graphical games that require, like, a game loop are a little bit different. All right, friends. Listen, Jeremy, he's done it. He's done it all. What are you doing? Are you? <laughs> I'm fixing bugs. Don't worry. <laughs> what did you just fix? Uh, it didn't reset oh. the words you found when you re-rolled the board. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. All right. This is the winner. We're going to do angry words for, by Micro David. So it's going to be able to like shoot letters across the screen with some CSS animations. 
All right, friends, I think that's it for Jeremy and I. It is now, the stream is concluding. We spent some time hanging out. Thank you for hanging out with us, Jeremy. Congratulations on finishing our first game through, during a stream. Big deal. You did it. How do you feel? I feel pretty good. Uh, it's funny. We ran into a fun little JavaScript thing here. <laughs> the score. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, what did you do to it? Oh, yeah. I can fix it. All right, you have like 10 seconds. Uh, oh, I don't know why. I just need to reduce. I ah, forget it. Four is always 100. <laughs> <laughs> All right, friends, that's been great. Jeremy, what are you going to do to celebrate your victory today's uh, coding challenge? I'm about to go into the office now and record a video about the Directive Composition API. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you for participating in that. And thank you, friends at home, for participating with the stream today. It has been a blast per usual, and we will see you, friends, next month. Oh, but before we go, we got to let you people know. Angular V15, get excited, coming in just a short uh, couple of weeks. So definitely be excited about that. We have a big event that we're doing for this one. It's going to be a very, very special launch. We can't wait to see you there. Any last words, Jeremy? Uh, I hope you like Angular v15. It'll be very good. <laughs> it will be very good. Okay, friends, until the next time, go build great apps.